We've uh, arrived on Brazil Island. It's the first time here, so we're gonna do some exploring. We're gonna take you guys with us. And it looks like it's pretty empty. Pretty empty so far. I mean, it is a Saturday, but there's no one here. This is where people get murdered. Yeah, what he said. So I'm with Andy. <laughs> hey guys. Hey. He's one of my old friends from a long time ago. We go way back. Way back when we used to live. In, well, when I used to live in Brazil, and he still lives there now. Oh, look, I've never taken one of those things before. The see, so there, so it is here. Looks like they're doing a lot of construction here. Might be uh, a new apartment complex going up. But it seems pretty residential though. Right? I think so. Look, there is a winner. <laughs> I think for the most part when I like look at the island from like far, it's always empty. I don't really see a lot of businesses here. There's a bus line. <laughs> look guys, look at how cute this spot is. I would totally take a couple here to do some yeah, engagement. Engagement photos. Bang them out. Yes, and bang them out. <laughs> as Andy says. I'm gonna take a date here too. Yeah, I would take a date here. And bang them out. Totally. Bang them out. Yes, here's a condom. Alright, and I might not go in the vlog. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to keep it as you rated, I guess, but we'll see. We'll see how the editing comes out. Bang it out. We'll see how the editing comes out. So, like I was telling Handy, me preservation architecture is a whole different type of architectural design altogether and it looks like a lot of this architecture here and trying to save the existing structure to preserve it kind of cool when you think about it because cool. uh looks like well it looks like there's a graffiti right, right on that wall so it looks like someone trespassed um but like if you look at how it's built, you see there's brick on the inside of that window. And then it's a stone facade in the front. They just attach that stone facade right on top of the brick. So the brick acts as the main structural part. And then the stone acts as more of a, of a facade to kind of keep out some of the weather. Yeah, it's pretty cool. The convergence point. Pretty neat. I can't remember who was the architect that designed this. So tell me in the comments below who was the architect. Probably find out as soon as I hit the end over there. Just check it out. Check it out. I would take a couple of photos. It's just got it at its best. Yeah. So, do you take him everywhere? More or less. Essentially, you take a picture of him everywhere uh, you've explored for the first time? More or less. Kind of cool though, right? I need to change them out. I need to get a new head sculpt and, and whatnot. There's a giant head of Franklin Delano Roosevelt. He kind of looks uh, holy in this 
in this viewfinder right here. So if I had to say, like, what the intention of the design of this park was, was to essentially create a perspectival um, view of the city, this specific location. Because it's all projecting out from here, and you're looking at it. But it's not even, like, the best view. Everything looks like construction. Yes. So at one point, one day... Nice review. Yeah. Right now you see seagulls. The battery's about to die, but uh, maybe I'll vlog with my camera. I mean, maybe I'll vlog with just my phone. shoot in the Met. Uh, <laughs> I know, vlogging's a little weird, but um, so we're gonna take you guys on this adventure with us, okay? Adventure time! Yeah. I guess the question is like, is there other purpose other than, you know, the focus of the artifacts that the Rinja kept dark? Are they dark like this? Oh, to preserve like the textiles and stuff, so this the harsh light would deteriorate the coloring. Oh, really? Oh, that makes sense. I mean, it is a painting of the regular folk, but like, this is probably a depiction because they yeah. wouldn't stay there. No, yeah, yeah. It's just like for that a book. moment, and this guy probably painted it with memory or his imagination. What is That's cool. Yeah. Adds a little pop of color. Do you watch Game of Thrones? Um, only with my parents. Did you see the episode where it's shame? Yes. Shame. My mom, shame. she waited for me to come Ding. home to watch it. She was like, you have to watch this episode with me. I was like, why? She's like, because this woman walks around me. I was like, what? Why would I want to watch that with you? Xerxes. <laughs> yeah. No, but my Oop. mom was like... Spoilers. <laughs> She was really excited to watch the episode with me. I have no idea why. George Shasty, and he was relatively unknown until the Met found all of this furniture, um, and they traced it back to his uh, his company. So it's sort of like a new discovery for the Met and for New York history, because no one had ever heard of this guy before, really. So what makes it so? Special, I guess. Just the intricate carvings and all the wood, and the way that he uses like two or three different types of wood and all the furniture pieces that he's made. So there's a lot of influences from the time, like Egyptian influences, because it was during the era where they people started exploring the old tombs. Um, a lot of Greco Roman influences, just because his, his clientele. The Vanderbilts, the Rockefellers, the 
I would play it. Makes sense. Makes sense. So this piano was a Steinway piano, but um, George Hasty designed the case for it to go around it. So it's sort of like a, a hybrid. Oh, interesting. So the outside is yeah, it's built in after the piano was built. Right. Like built onto. Right. Yeah, you see all of this art carving and the mother inlay and even the um, the music uh, board has all these like workings into it. Drama. Um, so this is the house where all of this furniture came from. Um, Look like a house in New York City. It is, yeah. It's uh, it, well, it was on 54th Street and 5th Avenue. Uh, <laughs> clearly not there anymore. So yeah, this is what it looked like. We have like a little little garden. Say that again. Uh, so this painting um, is Madame X. So we don't know her real name because it was a very scandalous um, debut of her portrait. Um, of her own portrait? Yes, of her portrait. Yeah, this is her portrait. She had uh, by John Singer Sargent. And in the original portrait, one of the straps of her dress was actually draped down over her arm. Scandalous. Exactly. So you've been in this room a couple times. Uh, in these rooms yeah. a couple times. This is the upper floor of the American Wing. Pictures, it's interesting history. If you know like the subjects and the artists. For some reason this reminds me of that political cartoon that they used to show on TV. Like the bill. Oh, um, school, school, schoolhouse rock. rock yeah. Yes. Oh, where? Like one of the rooms. It's very bright. It feels very castle-like. Right. You know? Yeah. This watch incorporates an early 18th century development in watchmaking, the use of jewel and stones. There's something classy about a party yeah. watch that I don't know, like, what it is, you know? Like, everybody likes them, and it's so, yeah, it's like... It's just one of those pieces that adds class. Class. <laughs> Facing cameras. Hi! Yeah, Alright. Uh, if you enjoyed the vlog for today, go leave a like subscribe and uh, leave me a comment in the, in the comment box below telling me which part of the Met if you've ever been to the Met uh, that you've enjoyed uh, so see you later guys go out there and make a difference <laughs> for some reason if you can hear there's like a ton of rumbling sounds uh, where we are we're like by the Met and Olivia is showing you exactly <laughs> what that's like <laughs> so it's really weird anyways check you guys later bye in Chinese Niango sounds like getting higher year end by year the idea behind this meaning is that the higher you are in life the better you are off like for better grades your your height your promotional status etc